before I forget. So thanks everyone for coming. Um, like once again, if you wanna, you know, do something with your name, that's fine. Um, that is great. I understand people want privacy. So uh, my name is Rita Denoyer Garcia, if you don't know me, and I'm a mother of three young adults, but when I had little ones, um, things got really chaotic. And so I'm gonna be talking about this with you and I'm gonna be talking to you about three simple steps you can take right now so that you don't go to the yelling place. We're gonna do that. But first I'm gonna ask you a couple of questions. So I hope you have um, a pen and paper. And the first question I have for you is, why did you come here? What brought you? Just write that answer down for yourself. What are you looking for? And then the next question I have for you is, what do you wanna get out of this time together? And then lastly, how you know you got what you came for. So what brought you here? What do you wanna get out of this time? And how you know you got what you came for? And the reason that I ask these questions is because so many times people come to all sorts of presentations, they're not quite sure why they're there, they don't remember or retain what they were listening to, and then it goes out the window. And so I want you to leave here. If at the end of this hour, you feel like, you know, I still have questions, or I don't think I got what I really wanted, that you can ask that question, or we can set up time to talk so you get what you wanted. Make sense? All right. And if it makes sense, you can give me a thumbs up or a yep. Yeah. Okay, or you can write something in the chat. Just let me know when you're finished writing. And then we'll go to the next thing. So thanks. So this is how you'll know you're perhaps in the right place right now with this hour is I have some scenarios for you. And the first scenario is you came because perhaps you're a professional mom who feels like things are always swirling around in a busy schedule. Your kids are running around, your dog is barking and everything falls on you. You're a one woman show. And at times this really makes you wanna scream. In other words, you have all the responsibility and you don't feel like you have quite all the authority or all the control or all the wherewithal. So that's scenario number one. Scenario number two is your children are a bit older. They're more independent. Uh, perhaps you have some older parents you're taking care of at this point. You're still kind of worrying about your kids, but you know eh, they're adults. They need to kind of do things on their own. But you also have those demands of your business, your career, your family, your community. And you feel like you're trying to please everyone. And when you do that, you forget yourself. And sometimes at those moments, you really lose it or you want to climb into your bed with a pint of haagen -Dazs. So that's scenario number two. And then scenario number three is you don't really fit either one or two exactly, but you do want to lash out or yell or cry because it seems like you have all this demands and burden on you. You don't feel like you have much control and you feel like a complete failure at times. So those are some scenarios of people that are aching for this information. So if you relate to any of those, just put in the chat one, two, or three, or all three, just let me know where you are. Great, three, two, okay. So you're a professional mom with the, the crazy schedule and the little kids, your mom with older children, maybe you have some parents that need your attention. You want to climb into your bed with haagen or not necessarily those, but you still feel like you're lashing out and you have a lot of demands. One and three. Excellent. Okay, great. 
So I'm going to tell you a little bit about me, my story, how I got into this crazy business of coaching and helping moms. Okay, cool. Monica, you can still be here and be a grandmother. Absolutely. So my story is this. I have, like I said, three kids. And when I was um, a, a younger mom, I had three kids, four and under. So I had a four-year-old, a two-year-old and a newborn, which is a lot of fun and a lot of chaos. And it's like having your own preschool in your home. And everyone was running around. And um, I was also thought, you know, I'm ra raising three kids. That's just not enough. I need to run a business too. So I was um, working on the phone, selling health and wellness products on the phone. I loved the products, um, but it was a little chaotic. I was trying to close sales with a toddler on my knee. Um, sometimes I was nursing someone while I was doing this. Um, it was, it was very chaotic. And since my mom had six kids and didn't have any childcare, I thought, well, I don't really need a lot of babysitters. I can just figure it out on my own. I don't want to spend the money. And um, there were quite a few moments where I thought something terrible was going to happen at any moment because I just wasn't putting my attention on my kids because my attention was going on my business. And if you know uh, little toddlers, they get into trouble real fast. So one day it just all hit the fan when I had a conference call and um, the guy who was leading us basically said, if you don't close anyone in the next two weeks, we're just going to have to take this these leads away. And I remember it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. And I muted the phone and I sat on the floor and I just started crying. I felt like a complete failure. I felt like I wanted to scream. Um, I felt like I was a terrible businesswoman and a terrible mother and a terrible wife and everything was was I think terrible and failure came up as two words that just kept coming up and up and up. And I felt very, very trapped in this um, situation. And I'm so glad that happened when I hit bottom because I stopped trying to do all of the things that I was doing before. It was sort of like I was now desperate enough to look for something different to do. And one of the things that I did after I stopped crying, um, and consoled my children who were also crying, I reached out for help from a coach. And one of the things that he really helped me with was this process that I'm gonna teach you today about how to become more connected with yourself when you're in those ultra stressed out periods of time in your life, which happened, for me, it happened several times a day. And I always did the same thing, which was I'd cry or I would lash out or I would push or I would shove or I would be short or I'd be angry or I'd be pissed off or I'd be passive aggressive. Nothing that was really helping me. Once I started doing some of these techniques and this strategy that I learned from my coach, I calmed down a lot more. I felt like I could handle more. I had capabilities I didn't know I had. I had choices that I didn't know I had because before I was always in reactive mode was reacting to a crisis instead of responding to something with a little more groundedness, with more empathy for everyone involved, um, with love, with patience, and with actual more effective planning. I was more present in my life. And one of the biggest things, the biggest litmus test that I found uh, recently was my family, all five of us went on a vacation together to Spain. And so imagine we're, we're training around Europe, around Spain together, doing all these different activities. And I, I noticed so many times where my old self would have reacted to something, you know, the luggage didn't show up, the venue wasn't exactly what we thought, someone was too hungry and irritable, you know, all these things that can happen when you're traveling. The plane is delayed. And I noticed I am a different person today than I was back then. I think that that would have been a terrible, miserable, resentful situation for me so many times during this vacation together. But actually, I was able to roll with it. I was able to respond differently. I was able to be a calming presence in my family so that if other tempers were flaring, I was able to respond and have them go down again. It made a huge difference. And I was so thankful that I had my 
hit bottom moment all those years ago. And then I've learned all these tools over, over the years. So why is this important to know? Being able to connect with yourself, even in those moments when things are going all over the place and not going well, is one of the most important steps you can do to make any lasting change in your life. If you don't learn how to deal with your own stress and overwhelm, it's just gonna come back and back and back and you'll keep on that automatic, what is it called? You'll be, what is it, um, hitting, you're just playing a whack-a-mole, whack-a-mole, right? But when you learn how to ground yourself and get connected and really feel what you're feeling, then you have choices. You can do different things. You start to see things on the menu that weren't there before. You develop capacities within yourself. You start liking yourself a little more. That's another big one that I noticed is that I started to like and respect myself more because I wasn't doing things that I was regretting all the time. Because I had a lot of remorse when I was lashing out. I would re have lash out moment, then I would feel so guilty and remorseful and I would apologize, but it just, my self-esteem would go down and down and down. So knowing how to deal with this stuff actually allows your self-esteem to go up because you gain confidence. A lot of self-esteem is based on, can I handle the situation? Do I have tools? Do I have resources? And this allows you to do that. And it made a huge difference in my life. Because now, not only was I able to do it for myself, I trusted that I could do it so other people could do it. And then I was able to teach it to other moms. And there's nothing more satisfying to me than to watch someone make a change in their life like that. Okay, so who here would like to feel better today? And you can just say me in the chat. So we're going to do the three steps. I'm going to walk you through it, and then we're going to actually do it together. Excellent. Okay. So the first step is to notice. Notice when you're feeling stressed. Some people don't even know they're stressed. They're just behaving in an erratic way or they're irritable. So knowing the signs of your stress, what are they? Are you feeling tired, uh, irritable? Do you feel like you want to scream? Is there a volcano going on inside you? Even though on the outside you seem kind of chill, the inside is the volcano. Are you sweating? Are you feeling tingly? Are you feeling numb? Are you feeling like I just want to dive into, you know, uh, a pint of ice cream? Do I want to go to bed? What are the signs for you that you feel stressed and overwhelmed? And we all kind of know because they come up over and over and over again. And when you notice when you're feeling stressed, what are you feeling in your body? Is your heart going? Are, you, are your palms sweaty? Do you feel sensations in your body? Do you feel tension? Do you feel tightness? I know I would feel it all here. But some people feel at different places. So the first step is just to notice and locate what's going on in your body. The next thing is to allow yourself to feel your feelings and to maybe remove yourself from the situation if you need to. So sometimes the places I want to would blow is in the kitchen when the kids are, run kids are running around and they're trying to get my attention. And I would just like want to scream because I just want to have some peace and quiet. So I would notice, and then I'd say, mom needs a timeout. And I would go to the other room. I'll be right back. And I was obviously take care of emergencies. You know, I would make sure there were no knives around. I would make sure the kids couldn't get into any trouble. And then I would go to that other room and I would just feel what I'm feeling. What are the feelings? What are the sensations? And here's a big one. I would not just feel the feelings, I would have compassion for myself around those feelings. So in other words, wow, you've been working all day or you haven't had lunch yet, or you're really tired and you're, you know, you got up at five, the kids are going crazy. I'm so sorry you're suffering. I'm so sorry you're feeling blank, angry, irritable, 
tired, cranky, rageful. So far, it makes sense? Okay, great. So having compassion yourself is asking yourself those questions. I'm so sorry. What's going on? And then ask yourself, what do I need right now? What do you need right now? And sometimes you don't know. In the beginning, you won't know all the time. You'll be like, I don't know. I just need to sit here. That's what you need. I don't know. I just feel horrible. Okay, let's do it. You get to feel horrible. Feel it. Give yourself what you need, whatever it is. Now, I have some caveats on that because sometimes we ask, we think we need certain things that are not necessarily good for us. So if it's like, I just need a, you know, a shot of whiskey, maybe you think that one again. Maybe it's, I need to relax. I need to breathe. And then the third step is this. Once you've given yourself what you need, you've had compassion for yourself, you've noticed, you're feeling it, what next steps need to be done that you can further give yourself what you need, what new options, choices, and strategies come up for you now that you've kind of cleared your head a little bit. And what can you do to support yourself going further? In other words, what can you learn from this to make it better next time? Because that's one that we don't always do, right? We kind of put the fire out, but then we don't say, what did I learn from this? And how can I avoid this fire next time? Because we're on to the next thing. Make sense? Okay. So now we're going to do this. And we're kind of doing it, it's kind of like birthing class, like I know you're not in labor right now, you know, but we're gonna do a little of the breathing to get you used to it. So you may not have a big stress going on, or maybe you do. You don't necessarily have like something pressing on you this moment, that's okay, we can still do, do this. But if you have something that's stressing you out, makes you wanna scream or yell or stamp or whatever, allow yourself to bring that in right now, because it's a really safe time to do it. And we're gonna go through these steps and I'm gonna have you write down anything that comes up. And then we'll just have a little Q and A through the chat or if you wanna say, cause like I said, I am recording all this for other people to see. So if you don't wanna be heard, that's fine, but you can write in the chat and I can read your, your chat. I won't mention your name. Okay, so everyone ready to the exercise? Okay, so I want you to just close your eyes I want you to notice how you're feeling right now. Maybe you're stressed at this very moment. Maybe you're super chill. That's okay. And if you need to bring in the stress that you want to get some more information about, whatever the situation is, maybe it's you know that you got to pick up your kids in an hour or so, or you're trying to figure out your babysitting situation, or you're trying to figure out why your grandkids are different or you're trying to figure out why your adult kids are doing what they're doing, whatever's stressing you out. Just notice what happens with your body physiologically. Is your heart beating more? Do you feel tension in your body? Where do you feel it? Just allow you to feel the sensations in your body. And you can even put your hand on these places in your body if you feel it. Sometimes I put my hand over my heart or my shoulder, my neck. You're just saying, I see you. I'm not gonna ignore you.
And then whatever emotion you're having, allow yourself to feel it. If tears come, that's okay. If you feel your jaws getting tighter, that's okay. Just notice it, put your attention there, allow your body to do its thing, feel your emotion and have compassion for yourself. I'm so sorry that you're feeling that way. That must be really hard. And then when you're ready, ask, what do I need right now? And see what comes up. And it could be, I just need to do this exercise. That's all I need to do. And whatever it is, whatever pops up, see if you can give it to yourself in the moment. And it could just be space and time, understanding, See yourself. So many people want to be seen and understood by others. And really what we need to do is just be seen and heard by ourselves. We need us to feel, see us. To understand ourselves. And whatever it is that you need, if you can immediately give it to yourself, decide, make a commitment that you're going to give it to yourself. Maybe the next 24 hours, the next hour, whatever it is. And then the next step is what are some next steps that need to be done now or in the future? What are some new choices or options that you have that maybe you didn't notice before? Maybe it's time to communicate with your partner or your kids or make a change in your schedule or take a break to relax. Or get some help. And what can you learn from this to make it better next time? So just notice what comes up and just take any notes. If you wanna remember something like, oh, I need to call that person or I really need to you know, go get that massage or man, I'm gonna pin down that babysitter before it's the last minute so I know that she'll show up. And just notice as you went through these, before you went through the three steps and then after you went to the three steps, how do you feel? Do you feel more relaxed? Do you feel less relaxed? What happened? This exercise is designed to get you out of the part of your brain that is in emergency mode all the time the part that is the, the freeze, fight, flight part of your brain and into the part of your brain that is innovative and creative and is great at problem solving and is very present and grounded. That's when you're best as a mom, as a business owner, 
as a sister, as a mother, as a grandmother, as an aunt, whatever roles you're in. So when you're ready, if you'd like, I would love to hear any questions you can put in the chat or comments like, what happened to you when you did this? Was it difficult? Did you feel resistant? Did you feel more relaxed? Did you have an aha? So you can just write it in the chat. Excellent. I access more solutions. Excellent. Great. So much easier when you're in that part of the brain than when you're in fight or flight mode. Anyone else? Anyone else get more solutions? Did anyone have a really hard time with this exercise? Just a reminder that as women at any stage need to take care of ourselves first. Yes, absolutely. It's the classic, we're all gonna talk, you know, the airplane thing, right? Put the oxygen mask on yourself first. Okay, I have a question. I find when it comes to the fourth step, what would you do in the future? I don't take the preventative measures and repeat the same pattern. Yes, absolutely. That's what most people do, right? We put out the fire. And then we go, whoop, fire's out and walk away. And then there's another fire and we're off to the races. That's why it's so important to ask like, what could I do in the future? What did I learn from this? What's the gift in this? Ultimately, you'll get to a place and when you're in that part of your brain that's solution oriented and innovative, you go, what's the gift of this? Like when I hit bottom, not in that moment, but a few months later, I was like, thank God I hit bottom. Thank God I was crying on the floor because otherwise I was just repeating the same stuff that wasn't working over and over. And I had to get to that point. I had to be desperate enough. Often we have to be desperate before we're open to different ideas. I was already relaxed, so felt sleepy when I closed my eyes, but I feel it could work when I'm under stress. Yes, not everyone's going to access the stress right now, and that's okay. But like we said, um, Sometimes you got to practice something before you need it. I know when I took a birthing class, I thought the breathing was kind of silly until I needed it. And I went, oh, I can do that breathing thing. Thank gosh, I exercised it and I practiced it. Rita? Yes. Um, can I just follow up on my question? And I'm sorry, I don't have my camera on. Just not. No, that's on. fine. That's fine. No problem. Um, so I guess when it comes to, oh, this is what I would do next time. It sounds like to me, um, from what you're saying, I need to come to this, like, come to Jesus moment, I guess, or like, yeah, just kind of like, yeah, no, this is needs to stop. And that, that wanting has to be pretty big, I guess. Yeah. And then if I were to sustain that, um, I'd have to just go back and repeat these first three steps yeah. so that I could stay in that window. Yeah, this is not a, this exercise is not a one and done. It, it's like, you know, I'm just going to talk about that too, is it's not like you go to yoga class and you're instantly flexible. Like you're going to have to repeat this. It's a rinse and repeat situation and you'll get better at it. It'll go faster. And then you'll be more likely to say, all right, I've repeated this three times, this situation, there's got to be a different way to do this situation. What is a better way? Mm -hmm. Is that, is that? Yeah. What you're saying? Yeah, I think so. Instead of just repeating it again, um, the same type to really say no, like to draw a line in myself, like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I'm cranky every day at three o'clock, Maybe I should eat lunch. Maybe eating lunch would be a good idea or having a snack, or maybe I don't talk to people at three o'clock or I don't try to do this. I'm just saying as an example, right? Mm -hmm. 
if you find yourself, you're having to do this over and over on something, it's, it's a real sign that maybe either what you're doing or how you're doing it or when you're doing it is not working. How, what, when, why? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or with who, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so you might have to explore a little bit, but you're more likely to come up with that solution. If you're in that part of your brain, that is solution oriented, not the, the fight or flight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, those yeah. are great questions. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Often when you're in the fight or flight, the solutions you come up with are not the best solutions because you're uh-huh. in the emergency, right? So, cause it's not designed for like, um, it's not designed for that. It's designed to get you out of a burning building, right? Mm-hmm. It's designed for you to come up with really creative solutions. So it's not like, you know, sometimes it's, that's it. I'm never doing this again, you know, is coming from fight or flight versus when you're in that part of your brain, that's a little calmer and grounded to go, okay, maybe there's just a different way of doing this. I don't have to throw the baby out with the bath water. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, I, I really like those questions. How, what, who, what, when, where, why? It's like getting really specific. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, I have one more question here. The only struggle I would have is how would you do that when you hear the kids in the background and through the vent and so loud that you find it distracting and go outside and they end up running around chasing each other. The kids in the background being loud is very distracting. Yes. So this is where we get really creative. And so sometimes you're going to, there's going to be just noise in the background and you're going to have to learn how to just breathe through that. Sometimes it's going to be, I'm going into a separate space, so I'm not quite hearing them for a minute or two, obviously with, you know, safety in mind for your kids. Sometimes it's time to call someone to come over and watch your kids so you can go someplace. So this is where the creativity comes in and the planning comes in so that it's not going to be perfect all the time, but for the next time you go, you know what, part of it is they're screaming and it's driving me bonkers. So how can I create a, a situation next time where either I'm not hearing their screaming so much or someone's watching them or I can remove myself or yes. My, my suggestion is usually because I have three sons and I'm on the other end. Um, they're all in their thirties now, um, but I am looking forward to be grandma. So just, just reminding that they could be bored. Yeah. You know, that's why they're screaming. So, or just doing things you don't want them to do is, you know, I try to make, try to have them do a small project. It could be planting a garden, you know, it's like, okay, time to go plant a garden. And you, you know, it may take them just 10 minutes because, you know, their attention span is really short, but it changes the activity because you're yes. then giving them something to do. Just the uh, yeah. Yes. And then, so that's what I realized, especially with three very active sons, they were just expanding or expounding their energy. So you just have to redirect. And it's the same thing when I felt myself getting annoyed at them. Um, and it was a minor thing. They were doing something wrong. And this, if they were older than I would say, you know, I, I love you unconditionally right now. I don't like you. So you better <laughs> get up to your room and start your homework. You know, so they understood that we're a family. We love each other, but what they were doing at that moment, like getting annoyed at me or, you know, being a, you know, being a mini man, it's like, you should do this mom, you know? <laughs> It's like, you know, no, no. And so you change the activity. So it helped me not get annoyed and then over abundantly annoyed. And it saved them from me chasing them with a spoon or something, you know, yeah. <laughs> talking about safety. So we learned to do this, both of them as my young sons and myself as their mom, um, to not nip it at the bud, but, you know, if it gets to a point where, you know, it needs to go one, it's going to go one way or the other is just to acknowledge it and change the activity. Yeah, that can be very helpful. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. So, um, okay. Any other questions before we move on? Okay, cool. Thank you so much for, for, uh, contributing and and thank you, Tina, for your, for your, um, wise elder advice. 
We all need wise up. That's one thing that's really helped me. I, if you have, if you have um, someone who's older than you, who's raised kids, um, have them in your life. They are a wealth of information. Someone you like and trust, obviously they help you see the mountains from the wrinkles. They really do help give you perspective. So I just have a couple examples of, of clients of mine who've used this technique really well, just to give you some more um, information. I had one mom, we're going to call her uh, Warrior Wendy, because I don't want to use anyone's name, but she was a bit of a warrior. And she used this process a lot. Um, and as an exam, uh, as a result, she was able to completely change her relationship with her ex-husband, her toddler and her living situation. And, um, I just spoke to her recently. And what I've noticed is that she was able to accomplish so much where she was paralyzed before. And now she's able to go out there and she got a new job and she moved and she did all this great stuff. And she feels so much more, um, confident. Now, does she have mountains to climb? Yeah, she has mountains to climb, but she's got some tools and strategies. Another mom that I work with who had this, I'm going to call her Achiever Alice. Uh, we all know big achievers in our, in our, um, in our lives. She had a bunch of kids and she had a high pressure demanding job. And uh, she used this technique. And what happened to her was she became a more appreciative of what she was building for herself because she was all about achievement and never about recognizing her achievements. And so they always rang hollow when there was always the next achievement. So she used this to really get connected with herself and say, oh my gosh, I I built some amazing things. I'm going to appreciate myself. And then she wasn't trying to get it from the outside world at the time and then saying, no one appreciates me because she was appreciating herself. And then the last mom who I've nicknamed Fixer Francine, these are not great names, people, but I'm trying not to use their names. But this, this mom was very much a fixer. She was always trying to fix uh, her kids and her husband and her situation. And she started using this technique. And what it helped for her was she realized she couldn't fix it all. Uh, inevitably, she she banged up against things that she couldn't fix and she didn't know what to do. And so what this helped her do was she realized that fixing was just a habit she had to feel safe. She was doing it to feel safe. And when she got more connected with herself, she didn't need to fix things to feel safe. She allowed things to kind of play out a little more. She did some like incremental fixing, but in general, she wasn't trying to fix everyone ever all the time. And she became much more um, happy and she started to enjoy her life and really getting on with her life instead of trying to fix everyone around her much. She started creating from a place of inspiration instead of fear. So, okay. Is everyone doing okay here? We're, keep going. Okay, great. So one of the things I'm going to talk about is this is a great tool. I hope you guys enjoy this and got something out of this, but this is like just the tip of the iceberg. And like I said before, you could go to one yoga class and think I know yoga and now I'm flexible, um, but that's not the way it is. You got to repeat it. You got to go to class. You got to learn different poses, right? Having one pose that you did once doesn't mean you know yoga. There's so much more to learn and there's so much more benefits. So it's the same thing with this. I taught you a strategy, you wrote it down, you could use it till the cows come home, which is great. And you can get a lot of mileage out of this process. And I hope that you do. But we all know that we as people tend to take tools and books and strategies and we say, this was great. And then we put it on the shelf and then we never use it again. And then we're back where we started. And that's the difference between making a little bit of change and making lasting change. So what I want to do with you, luckily, we're in the right place, is I want to talk to you about what would happen if you actually had a whole range of tools and a whole bunch of support over a period of time, what would life be like? And this is what it took me to make real change. So I'm going to share my screen. and tell you a little about a program I have that's called the Season of Freedom. Does everyone see this? Season of Freedom? Okay. So I developed a six week program um, called the Season of Freedom. And the reason I call it the Season of Freedom is because before I felt really trapped in all of these 
behaviors that I had that I didn't know what to do with. I didn't know any other way of dealing with situations. I didn't know what I didn't know. And the season of freedom is really a, a, a season where you understand you have more options than what you thought. It's freedom of choice. It's freedom of to decide not to do something instead of feeling compelled to do it. It's the freedom to say something when you wouldn't say something or not say something when you felt compelled to say something. It's the freedom to remove yourself, the, the, the freedom to remove yourself or to join in. In other words, it's giving you, when you're in that part of your brain that is innovative and creative, you have more freedom. So this program is geared towards um, women who want to wake up every day excited to show up for your career, your family, yourself, and with more confidence. It's about silencing the inner critic, the mind garbage, the beating yourself up, um, and taking on new challenges. It's about being clear about who you really are as someone who has an impact, as a mother, a businesswoman, a partner. It's learning how to say no thank you when you feel you know, obligated to say thanks that you can say no thank you to certain demands and obligations that don't work for you anymore. And it's about learning to be authentic in your communication so you can be clear and confident in your relationships, feeling a sense of joy and ease, knowing that your family life, your personal time and your career are finally working for you. And I think the most important thing of all, feeling love for yourself as a human being that you don't have to be perfect all the time. You can literally love yourself. That creates a lot of freedom when you really love yourself. Because, I mean, I don't know about you, but I have done a lot of things in my life from a lack of love for myself. Things that did not work for me. Make sense so far? So I just wanna give you a sneak peek about what is in this program. First of all, it's six weeks. It's once a week for an hour with a group of other women doing the same thing. And then in between, we're communicating with each other. So we're staying connected and supporting each other. And each week, I'm going to be giving you tools, strategies, just like the one I taught you today, but more so, so that you can, it's sort of like different poses for different things. Sometimes you need hip openers. Sometimes you need stretches. Sometimes you need to just lay down, whatever it is. Um, and then over the, the period of time, so you have time to implement these things, time to, uh, to exercise them, practice them, see if they're working, make adjustments. Because that's another thing when you're on your own, if something doesn't work after a while, you just kind of throw it away instead of going, maybe there's something I can do with this. Who can help me tweak this? What am I doing wrong here? So in this course, we're gonna look at specifically how your thoughts and emotions work, just like parts of your brain how they can limit you or propel you forward because we all have limiting thoughts and beliefs and emotions, but we don't know they're limiting. We just believe them. This course will also um, allow you to use the challenges of your day to make breakthroughs. Just like when I hit bottom, it was a huge breakthrough for me that I didn't recognize. I just thought I'm hitting bottom, this is terrible but actually using those challenges to make breakthroughs to what you, uh, so you can feel more worthy, confident, enthusiastic in your life. So imagine if you welcome challenges as opportunities to have breakthroughs so that you can improve your life. It completely changes your relationship to everything when you're not shying away from challenge. This course also um, is going to be covering connecting with your family, your boss, whoever that is, your friends, your family, uh, your um, community, yourself, how to catch yourself when you're in it emotionally. So noticing when you're having those emotions, noticing when you're in that state, instead of going into the spiral and making decisions maybe that you regret, being able to preempt that and then getting clear on your personal and professional goals so that you can use them to become the person you were born to be. That's a big one. 
is that we kind of just live our life and we don't think about what do we really want in our life? What kind of person do we want to be? What kind of family do we want to have? What kind of um, career do we want to have? Sometimes we spend a lot of time planning things for our kids, but not about our own lives. Think of things that you spend a lot of time planning and then think about your own life. Did I really plan that? Did I really think about where I want to go with this? So the reason why this is all important is because if you can uh, learn how to connect better with yourself, catch yourself when you're emotionally in it, know where you're going, then pretty much you can deal with any situation that comes up. And when you know you can deal with any situation that comes up, guess what? Life becomes more fun because you're, you're not constantly guarding against what if. You're not trying to um, avoid all the traps because you're like, trap schmap. I'll know how to deal with it because I feel good about myself and I'm grounded. I'm bigger than any problem I have. Your relationship to life changes because you get out of a fixed mindset about things. You're more flexible and innovative because you're in that part of the brain that can problem solve. And the bottom line is you're gonna be different with the people that are most important to you. Whether they're your kids, your grandkids, your spouse, your friends, your parents, your coworkers, your clients. If you can have a better relationship with yourself, you have a better relationship with them and everything gets better. It gets better. Does anyone have questions for anything I've said so far? So our program starts September 20th. That's next Wednesday, so a week from tomorrow. Um, I have a link. I'm going to stop sharing, and I'm going to give you the link for the program. Oop, what happened? There's more, let's see. Oh, it won't let me share it. All right, let me try it again. There we go. Thank you, I got your message, okay. Oh, that's very nice, thank you, Hillary. HJ, sorry, thank you, HJ, sorry about that. Um, so in the chat is the link to the actual program. Um, and if you go there, what I ask you to do after you read that is just literally to, to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me if you've never taken any of my courses. Some people in this group have taken my courses, I know them. And so they, we can just go to the next stage if they wanna do it and um, do that transaction. But if you've never done one of my courses, I really want to talk to you to make sure that you are a good fit for this course, because we're going to be close together for the next six weeks. I want to make sure that you're ready for this and that um, you're going to be a good fit with the group. So if you click on that link, you can read through a lot of details of the program and then just click on the, you know, have a conversation with me and schedule one. I have a couple of things I wanted to let you know before we wrap this up. And one is um, not only do you get the six weeks, you also get a one-on-one -on -one laser call with me, which is like a 20, 25 minute personal coaching um, session with me about anything you want along the six weeks. So that's included, but I have a special bonus for people who schedule with me within the next 24 hours meaning that you go on my schedule and you schedule a time. It doesn't have to be within 24 hours, but you go to my, you took action. You went to my schedule and you scheduled uh, an appointment with me. And that is an extra coaching session just on schedules, just on time freedom. I think that's one of the biggest issues that we have as people is that um, we never have enough time, it seems like, in our schedule. So if you could solve that problem of how do I create more time, how do I have more freedom in my schedule, you are good to go. So if you 
go to the sales page and schedule a time with me within the next 24 hours, that is available to you. I'll be so happy to give that to you. Are there any questions? Or comments? I had a comment. Um, so I heard, I, I'm sorry, my I lost my website two weeks ago and, and the person called, so I had to step off to get that back. Um, but, and I heard you say some movement and maybe you talked about some breathing. Could you just maybe enunciate or go over like, what are, are the tools that you're using to shift people to the relaxation response? In the program, are you talking about? Or? Yes, in the program, yeah. So yeah, in the program, I'm gonna be doing things like emotional release techniques. So we're gonna be doing breathing. We're gonna do um, some Sedona method. Um, we're gonna do one that I kind of made up on my own where we do visualization and breathing and a lot of somatic work. Um, we're gonna be doing some mindfulness uh, techniques from positive intelligence. So some of those involve breathing, some of those involve visualization. They're all sensory. Um, what else? We're gonna, I'm gonna be talking about things that people can do on their own in terms of breathing and movement. So Kevin, great. I- Sounds great. That's your bread. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you, you went out. Okay. Can you hear, can you so, hear me? Yeah. Emotional release techniques, which involve breathing. I'm going to have suggestions for people to do certain exercises during the week. We're going to do the Sedona method as well. And mindfulness from positive intelligence and some stuff that I'm going to add on that I have in my back pocket that I'm not, uh, haven't written down yet. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds great. What's the Sedona method? Um, well, join the program, you'll find out, Kevin. But no, okay. method is a is an emotional release technique. Um, you can watch uh, YouTube videos about it. It's all over the place. I've heard of it. I just didn't. I don't remember okay. what it was. Okay. Emotional release exercise. Yeah. Sounds good. I, Sounds good. Yeah, but I'm going to do a variety of different uh, tools because different things work better for different people. You know. And I, I, I kind of see a lot of these strategies as like shampoo, like you use shampoo and it's great. And then all of a sudden it's not working as well. And you switch to a different shampoo and it works even better. Um, so a lot of these things, you kind of have to switch them up from time to time too. It's like exercise, like sometimes it's push ups, sometimes it's curls, sometimes it's over the head, you know, different muscles, different, you got to give your body different things sometimes. Awesome. Any other questions if you have any questions for me um or you can't find a time on my schedule that works for you just reach out you can email me I'll put my email in the bottom don't hesitate to email me and just ask if you have a quick question or you can't find a slot Okay, so any other things before we we wrap it up? Is um is it possible uh, since I missed a good part of it? Is there a recording I could get? Yes. I'm recording it right now, and okay. um, I'm gonna put up the recording uh, today. I'll put it up. Um, I'll probably put it up in an email. Um, if you're on the list of registered people, you should be able to. I'll you'll get it. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you everyone for coming. Just remember if you're here, you probably need this. Um, don't wait till another time. It's six weeks uh, is actually not even that long. But what I want to say to you is 
if you can be in the company of other people who are doing this work and get support and practice these different things, I promise you, you're gonna have changes in your life. So um, when you leave here, schedule a call with me. I'd love to hear from you. Even if you decide not to do it, I would love to talk to you. So have a good day. Sounds everybody. good. Thank you so much. I hope you had a good time. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, Rita. Really appreciate it. It was a great reminder. Very good. Thanks for coming.